Hello everyone and Happy New Year 2023! In my last video I mentioned that I might make a video with a preview of what the year 2023 will look like on my channel. And then the holidays came and I spent the whole time with my family. So I'm very sorry for no video. I also thought that a preview might be pointless, because I don't even know what video I'm going to make next. But I promise you, I got some interesting retro hardware and a few good ideas. Last year was quite interesting for me, because YouTube allowed me to monetize my channel. The revenue from ads is still insignificant compared to the expenses, but I'm optimistic that it will improve over time. But thank you everyone who is supporting me by watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. In today's video, I want to tie up loose ends by revisiting the topic of undervolting the Pentium 2 400. When I started this project, the modified BIOS I was using for the ASUS P3BF only allowed to set the CPU core voltage to 1.55 volts. At this voltage, the CPU was still stable and I could run benchmarks as well as play games without issues. So I reached out to the author who modified the original BIOS from ASUS and asked if there are additional voltages that could be unlocked. Dennis replied the same day and gave the details I was looking for. Apparently the board supports voltages as low as 1.3 volts and I also received an updated BIOS file with all voltages unlocked. The link to the modified BIOS is in the video description. Thank you Dennis. Let's flash this BIOS and see how much lower we can get the vCore for this Pentium 2 CPU. With the new BIOS installed, we are indeed able to select voltages as low as 1.3 volts. Now we can continue to test the CPU with even lower voltages and can confirm if those new BIOS settings are working. To monitor the voltage, I will connect the Arduino which can measure the voltage provided to the CPU. We used this Arduino in the first video of undervolting the Pentium 2. If you are interested how to set up the Arduino and where on the motherboard I am measuring the core voltage, Watch the video linked in the top right corner. We already know that the CPU is stable at 1.55 volts. So let's continue and see how much lower we can set the core voltage until we see stability issues. 1.5 volts is the next setting we can select for vCore. The new voltage settings in the BIOS work without issues and the new value is applied during the boot process right after the hard disk detection. With 1.5 volts, the CPU is still stable and finishes PC Mark 2002 with a score of 1060, like in all previous tests. I guess we can go even lower with the CPU. 1.45 volts. This CPU does not disappoint. This Pentium is still able to run the benchmarks without any sign of instability at that voltage. But this is it for this CPU. Any further drop in voltage and it becomes unstable. Finally. It would have been really awkward if we reached 1.3 volts, wouldn't it be? At 1.4 volts, the CPU can't make it past the system configuration screen. It stops right after listing all the PCI devices. And just for fun, I reduced the voltage one more step to 1.35 volts. With this voltage, the CPU can't make it past the initial boot screen. The detection of the hard disks is the last sign of life. And after that, the boot process stops. And this is it for the Pentium 2 400. My sample can be undervolted to 1.45 volts. To test for proper stability, you would have to test for a longer period and test all kinds of scenarios including the MMX instructions. But for our purpose here, it's enough. Now I just want to quickly test another Pentium 2 model, which was part of a hardware bundle I recently got in Germany. A Pentium 2 333. This is the last Pentium 2 running at a 66 MHz frontside bus, but it also uses the same core as the 400 MHz version from before. Those CPUs all have a fixed multiplier, and in the case of the 333 MHz model, the multiplier is 5. I want to quickly test if this CPU is capable to run at 500 MHz by setting the frontside bus 
to 100 MHz. With the stock voltage, the PC didn't want to boot, so here I am already testing at 2.1 volts. Unfortunately, even at that voltage, the PC does not boot. I am comfortable to increase the voltage one step further, to 2.2 volts. But even at this voltage, the CPU doesn't want to boot, so my model can't run at 500 MHz. Some later revisions of the CPU are said to be working at the stock voltage with 100 MHz frontside bus. So if you are lucky and have a later Pentium 2 333, try if you can run it at 500 MHz. In terms of undervolting, this CPU behaves exactly like the 400 MHz model. I could set the voltage down to 1.45 volts and boot into Windows, run a few benchmarks and even play games without any sign of instability. But once we go to 1.4 volts, the CPU doesn't want to cooperate anymore. I am not sure if the silicon quality is at play here or we just reached a physical limit where the voltage just isn't high enough to power the circuits. It's just a bit odd that both CPUs stop functioning at the same voltage. Ok, now let's move on to another addition to my retro hardware collection. A Pentium 3500 in the single edge contact cartridge. Boy did I dislike disassembling that thing. I think this is right at the top of the worst cooling solutions in terms of maintenance. After all those years you have to replace the thermal paste under those coolers. But I almost skipped it because of the fear that I might damage the exposed die trying to loosen the heatsink. I am looking for a better solution than those plastic clips, but for now I have to reuse them. Let's hope that this thermal grizzly will make sure that the CPU is fine for the next decade, because I do not want to remove this heatsink ever again. This Pentium 3 with cut my core is manufactured with the same technology as the Pentium 2, in 250 nanometers. The level 2 cache system has been taken over from the Pentium 2 as well. What we do get however are the new SSE instructions. Good to see that I have a working Pentium 3, even though it's just the cut my edition. I will undervolt the CPU in larger steps because I believe we will see similar results to the Pentium 2. Let's reduce the voltage to 1.75 volts. This moderate reduction shouldn't cause any issues. And as expected, the Pentium 3500 at 1.75 volts works. Let's reduce the voltage again. At 1.5 volts, the CPU is still stable, but this will be the final voltage for the CPU. When dropping the voltage another step to 1.45 volts, PC Mark 2002 freezes right after the beginning of the benchmark, and a further reduction locks up the PC before reaching the Windows loading screen. Considering that we are clocked at 500 MHz, it makes sense that we require a bit more voltage to run the CPU compared to the Pentium 2 400. Before we finish this video, I want to show you a further update that Dennis made to the latest modified BIOSes. You may have seen this hardware monitor error during the boot process. This error appears if the board detects an abnormal voltage reading. In the cases today, this was due to the CPU voltages. But you can get this error also if you're using a modern ATX power supply while keeping all the voltages at stock. This is because modern ATX power supplies do not supply negative 5 volts. The latest BIOS ROMs disable this reading in case the negative 5 volt rail is missing, or so far out of spec that it looks like it's not present. In most cases this should be ok. Just be aware that if you want to monitor the negative 5 volt rail, this BIOS won't warn you if your power supply indeed delivers negative 5 volts but is over a certain value. And with that we have reached the end of this video. This was the last bit I wanted to make sure is covered from the old year. 
like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel for some exciting new projects. Thank you for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.